Perfect. Can you guys see the record on your side? Yeah. I'm just going to put my phone on airplane mode. Here you go. Awesome. So we are officially episode two right now of my race to 10K followers at this point. I have on two superstars, two of my, my favorite creators. Jeremy Buissano, is that am I pronouncing that correctly? Buissano? Yeah, you can say it the American way, voice not. <laughs> voice <laughs> you can, Yeah, you can say voice you know in French, but it's a bit tough to pronounce. But at least my name is Jeremy, so when I was in the US, it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy and Jacob, the two J's. The two J's. Yeah. And um yeah, I just had a big, big launch with the, the Fabicon 200. And you know, we we're excited yeah. to uh to obviously dive into that stuff jacob is what was it 183 is that the ranking something like i count the three they said number three online business coach oh that. okay nice <laughs> nice yeah and um so uh, jeremy to start i have to ask the question because i've heard this from some friends who have visited france but i've never actually been is it true or false that if you don't say bonjour you get upcharged for drinks. I need to know the answer to this question. No, it's not true. But you know what really pisses <laughs> off is when you're when you live in Paris and you've got this like American tourist. I don't know, like coming into restaurants or coming to Magos, and you come in and you just say, "Hey, you're gonna you're gonna be in trouble." We just want people to say bonjour, and that's it. And that's it. It's, uh, but yeah, I've had I've known people who actually uh, like the deliberately gave the, the wrong uh, you know direction to tourists because they wouldn't make any effort so that's definitely not a myth true true well you probably would have a tough time over here in philadelphia because it is no holds barred for how they <laughs> introduce themselves and how they uh accept drinks over here but um yeah and as far as the i mean i was looking at your background for the last two days just doing some research why i mean you at this point in your career you could have done anything right you could have started anything you wanted to why why is it favicon or favicon am i pronouncing that correctly either way it's fine you can say favicon or uh, yeah either way yeah so why favicon? Um, because actually like like you said like i used to be like i started to be an entrepreneur like 10 or 12 years ago and i started in a SaaS space in a very techy space you know like when i was in new york at a company we would uh, run like uh servers we would uh, learn we would sell a software to monitor servers so it was very techy and so at this time i had no idea about influencers or even social media in general and that's when i came back to france i got like it was really a, like by chance uh, a friend bought a company and he told me can you run the company because it wasn't my first experience and it was uh, a, a company in france we would have web tvs with influencers uh, gamers so on youtube twitch and that's uh, really how i discovered the space and i thought it was amazing because for many reasons but first it's so full of creativity uh, you never get bored in the space because things are you know, changing. I mean, it can be frustrating when you work in the social media industry for sure, but mm -hmm. it never gets boring. It never gets stale. Uh, there's always something new going on, and it really matches my, you know, my personality, where I really need all the time to discover new stuff, uh, to learn new stuff. And in social media, I think it's awesome. And also, I love to write. I love to read. So you know, this combination of everything really made me want to go even deeper into the space. Yeah, and it's. I mean, what you're building is fantastic it's probably like as a content creator it's probably the first idea we all come up with right we're like how do yeah. we sort out the best of who and where i can pick from and you know leadership within the space and uh just different niche topics that i want to find more people like me or you know speaking to me about and uh, I'll, I'll somewhat segue into that to ask jacob the question like did you ever expect what was it? Jan Did you start posting on LinkedIn January 1st? Is that the first post ever? Yeah. 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 Like, Did you ever expect within nine months to be on 200, top 200? I mean, honestly, because I own a, a content marketing agency and a web design agency that we used to do what was, I didn't know it was called ghostwriting in the LinkedIn world, right? Yeah. Uh, it was a social media management. So we used to grow and monetize accounts for a living. And there's certain techniques for Instagram, for Twitter, for LinkedIn, 
And primarily we used to do that. And then I was always the, the ghost in the background, but had all the systems and the things. Um, and then one day I was like, you know what, why don't you do it for yourself? But I never expected, like it hits different when it's you, yes, right? Yeah. You wake up one day and you're like, I can post something now and it does really well. This is cool. Like yeah. when it was for someone else, you're just like, yeah, I'm getting paid, growing their account, cool. They're making money, I'm making money. But the moment it started to take off, I'm just like, okay, it's now 5K, and then it's 10K, and then it's like 30K. Okay, some shit is happening. Yeah, this it's is really real good. now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it, it was funny to me because most people, and I don't even know if you know this, Jacob, and this was going to be in my post when we uh, officially launched, but um, most people don't know this. So when I first decided this year that I was going to, I mean, I never really decided to be a content creator, but I said, you know what? I'm going to start on a platform. I'm going to get myself out there. Just see what comes of it. If a business comes of it, great. Maybe another job opportunity, great. So I started on YouTube, hated it. <laughs> hated doing video, hated editing video, hated just the grind of the daily video thing. So I said, okay, maybe not. Jumped on Twitter and I have never been on Twitter my entire life. And I jumped on Twitter and I had eight followers, 12 followers. And Jacob was the <laughs> first guy to message me. He was the first guy to like a post of mine and comment on it. And I looked, I was like, what? This dude's got hundreds of followers. He's got thousands of followers. Why is he commenting on my thing? Um, and then I met someone that I was you know, friends with and a fellow data scientist as well. And he just said to me, he goes, wait, you have like 4,000 connections on LinkedIn. Why on earth are you not posting content on LinkedIn? Like that's a head start, right? So I moved over to LinkedIn, uh, found Jacob immediately because he was <laughs> what we were like 10, 12, 15,000 followers back in April at that point. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just the snowball effect, the butterfly effect takes place. And as soon as I found Jeremy and I mean, just the the uh, sort of the creator network that you've kind of coveted and, and harbored at this point to share with everyone else. I was just like, wow, this is an opportunity to not just find your own voice, but it's also an opportunity to find other uh, creators with smaller audiences, which I think is so important when building a community and to just ping pong with, like share ideas with in the DMs and um, just such a fantastic product you're building. As far as like the future of Favicon, where do you see, I mean, I know with the rollout today, you were saying of, uh, or post today, you were saying we'll roll out different languages, different countries, of course, yeah. but where do you see like the five, 10 year vision of this product? Well, you know, the reason why we built Favicon in the first place is because like you said, there's, there's a strong need in the industry to know who really matters in, a, in topics because you know, like five years ago, we talk about Instagram influencers, LinkedIn influencers, etc. And now it doesn't make sense anymore. It's about being like a content marketing influencer. It's about being a sales influencer, this kind of stuff. And like uh, Jacob, like yourself, you're on Twitter, uh, you're on LinkedIn, uh, you have a podcast, maybe newsletter, this kind of stuff. So you need to combine everything to know who really matters on this stuff. And mm -hmm. that's the, the re what really motivates us every day to go deeper, deeper, and to have like the most accurate answer to this. Uh, and to give you know like an alternative to all these uh, lists that already exist, but usually you know it's about like I said last year, last week, it's about politics, it's about who you know, it's about you know it's, it doesn't make sense. We want to use data to be as accurate and as non-biased as we can. So I would say that in five years we want to be to cover everything, all social medias, all countries, to be able to say okay on this topic uh, there are like I don't know. Like, 10,000 people and to be able to say like on like for music you know like you have these barometers you have every every month you know uh, which song is rising this kind of stuff you really want to replicate the same model for uh, creators and mm. this year was a big step forward for us because thanks to AI uh, for us it was such a like game changer because it makes it so much easier for us uh, to grab all the, the information because we have so much data and to yeah. be able to give more accurate answers so that's why by the end of the year we're going to be able to roll out pretty much everything so that was the top 200 this week uh and i know it's going to sound uh, weird but for me it's the least interesting now because uh, let's it's like 
if we are being honest, now it's kind of like always the same places. Uh, so we're really more excited about the new countries coming up, like India, Nigeria, all these fresh creators who are rising. And um, we've had a lot of, um, like in the past few days, a lot of criticism because there are not enough female creators in the top. Uh, so that's something we really, really have in mind. Uh, we're trying our best, but the thing is, we don't control the algorithm. So if they, like if the algorithm pushes forward more men than females, there's not much we could do. We could add points, bonus points, if you're a female. But I feel like that would defeat the purpose of having you know a non-biased ranking. So that's that's what we're trying to to change. That's why next week we're going to try to roll out rankings dedicated to females, so that they you know people know about them and maybe in the, the long term it will change uh, things. So that's where we're at right now. Yeah, it's such a value add, I think, too, to bring more women to light because. Yeah, I mean, and it's like when it comes to content creation, when well, to content discovery, it's uh, like ever since we we dived into new countries, uh, like for instance, again in Nigeria, for, so, for me, it's such a relief to find out about you know new new types of content, not like different trends. It's so nice, and I really want to give more you know uh, outlooks on uh, mm -hmm. creation than the usual uh, ones that we already know. And again, I'm not criticizing them, they're doing a great job, but I feel like content creation is all about diversity, it's about uh, doing new kind of stuff, and uh, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, diversity of everything, diversity of thought, diversity of creation. It's how innovation happens, you know? It's the yeah. sort of the catalyst for all of it. So I totally agree and, with that sentiment. And, and I'm gonna finish on this but on this part, but sure. also on LinkedIn, but like that first semester, I don't know about you guys, but I felt like, LinkedIn got kind of stale. It was always the same kind of content. Always, mm -hmm. you know, this, I don't know, there was no creati creativity. Yeah. So I kind of got bored, uh, honestly, a few months ago. And uh, for me, it was really refreshing to to go overseas, if I may say. And uh, I think many people uh, will uh, love to find about this uh, kind of new stuff. Yeah, Jacob, if you want to chime in too. Yeah, I mean, I feel that one thing that I found just watching from the sidelines and things that work, obviously, this is just speaking from experiences. Uh, what you felt, Jeremy, was really cool because I, I tend to like, I don't want to say mute, but it's like you scroll and you see the same regurgitated yeah. thing again because people were looking for growth. And what Ryan said initially, like, you know, the number isn't so much what matters, it's the person behind it. And you'd see a lot of gems with the lower followings in creators versus the big ones, because they're you're just like chasing the dragon almost. So one little idea that I was doing, I'm like, you know, at first LinkedIn was this suit and tie thing. Then it became this creator economy, but it was filled with just the same regurgitated thing, like how to grow, how to do this. Um, one idea that I had obviously it has to do with character traits is I started joking around and being sarcastic. Like that was my natural state. And a lot of people wonder like, you know, what the hell is this watermelon thing this guy's talking about? <laughs> and yes, it's funny obviously, but it's actually yeah. just a way to express yourself with something yep. jokey, yeah. a little story. And then now I'm seeing this shift with other creators where they coin a word, they start a fight playfully, obviously they tell a story and coming from like the Twitter universe where it's like Reddit and crypto and memes and, and all of that, where it's harder to express, we're now seeing a little shift from creators that have started joking around and like just showing their true colors. Um, and I think that breakaway is only gonna get better as people notice with AI and all of this, that to break it, you need stories, you need personality. So yeah. personally, because, yeah. Yeah, you, you mentioned, I'm a huge Twitter fan. Uh, it's uh, paradoxically, it's the, the social media I use the most. Uh, yeah. Especially, I've been a huge Twitter user. And I felt like there's, there, were, there used to be this lack of authenticity on LinkedIn because people are so afraid of speaking up yes. in front of their colleagues, their friends, under their real name. And Twitter is the exact opposite. You get yeah. polls, uh, the people don't give a shit about anything. Yep. And they would, people would be te like literally terrified post on Twitter and uh, it was really funny two years ago like so these complete opposite platforms and now it's kind of like you know both platforms are 
uh, evening up and uh, it's evening out and that's really interesting to see. Uh, but yeah, like you said, like is there's a prime for authenticity right now. And what I also said in my today's post is that, is that in the top 200, uh, people who talk about personal branding, uh, it's clearly not as big as it used to be. I feel like there's kind of like some kind of saturation. Uh, there was there's been so much content about growing on LinkedIn, uh, how to grow, how to grow, you know, this kind of stuff. And people kind of get got tired of it. And I think also the, the LinkedIn algorithm has hit them hard. Uh, there's a price yes. for valuable content. That's what I've noticed in the, in the latest update. But uh, I think that's a good thing for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, and I think that almost forces people, you're now hearing the people complain, oh, the reach is dead, this is dead. It's, no, it's not dead. Like, just adapt to what's there. And I think sharing a lot of experiences with Ryan as well, and you probably understand and resonate, is we love looking at data and love monitoring on what works. Instead of, like, you know, copying another creator or doing that, find the data points of what you pushed out. That's why I love Twitter as well, right? doesn't yeah. matter the following. If you if you get 10 likes and suddenly you got 15 or 20, use that. Bring it to another platform. We study all sorts of like, you know, hooks from YouTube, bring them in, Quora, questions, this, that. And we just like map everything out. And it's we even cross-share ideas like, oh, this worked, let's repurpose it. Yeah. And then you don't really need a lot. You just need an arsenal of the data points of what worked. And then you go on a redistribution or a repurposing yeah. quest. But it's really, really interesting because we've had lately many Twitter influencers uh, coming to LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and it's like they're playing the game on easy mode. They have these all these followers, uh, tons of followers within months, and the opposite is not true at all. Like LinkedIn influencers going to Twitter, I've seen their data, their uh, number of likes, followers, way way harder. So it's really interesting to see, and it doesn't surprise me because. Uh, I feel like coming from LinkedIn, it's it's really harder right now to to tackle Twitter because it's a complete different, completely different universe, and that's why when you talk about you know content creation, uh, creative creators, especially those in personal branding, uh, you know many people qualify themselves as personal branding experts, but in <laughs> fact they're only LinkedIn experts because they <laughs> yep. they don't do their do the same job when they're doing on Twitter, so they're they just master LinkedIn, but they don't master personal branding. I feel like for you, Jacob, you're a personal branding expert because you managed to do it uh, properly on, on both platforms. So sorry. Well, like one thing that I find, and we chat about this a lot, is imagine you take the profile picture away and the banner away. Could you tell that it's Jeremy? Yes. Could you tell that it's Ryan? And on Twitter, because it's such a text first platform, yeah. Obviously, like, excuse my language, but all the shit posting and all of that stuff that comes through, you just know that it's that person because they're a meme, they were anonymous, they were whatever. So one thing that I always aim to do is like consider if I was to rip it all apart, can you still tell that it's me or you or whoever? And you'll realize that on LinkedIn, it's still not there yet. You rip it all apart, they all look the same. Like paste yeah. them in a spreadsheet. And, and look at what happens. Um, so that's a really cool kind of tip that I love from Twitter because talking to a lot of creators over there as well, you show that it's almost like the unmasked version of who you are, your true self over yes. there. <laughs> like just move it and be yourself there yeah. on LinkedIn. So um, it's a really good branding exercise and a really cool observation, I think. I wonder too, when you when you say that, the jump from Twitter to LinkedIn being easier. I wonder if that sort of relates to the idea that being yourself, being open, transparent, and honest creates more of a raving fandom yeah, there's from your a, followers versus there's the a, sort of professionalism speak that everyone seems to lean on in LinkedIn. There is a trend like on Twitter, it's really this whole build in public thing, or you literally tell about your life, uh, you do storytelling, like you said, you just tweet whenever you want, whatever you want, uh, as opposed to LinkedIn, where you do this like big post, everyone in the while, everything has to be perfect. So, yeah, it makes sense for Twitter influencers, they used to just share their thoughts, and that's what really works in the end. So, why they're coming on LinkedIn, they're like, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna do the same, and it just works, and they prove it. Yeah, and what I also see too is individuals who, for that 
short 30 days that I was only on Twitter and not posting anything on LinkedIn, people I follow like Dickie Bush and, um, oh gosh, I'm blanking out his name, Dan Coe as well. When I got over to LinkedIn, I realized as I'm taking all this new creator advice, you got to engage, you got to respond to comments. They don't follow any of that on LinkedIn. <laughs> it's literally just moving what wow. was Twitter over. And I don't, I've never seen them reply to a comment or engage on someone else's stuff. And it still works because they're Brit, they're literally transplanting their audience from one to the other. And it's the same exact content, same exact voicing, same style. So super yeah, interesting. Uh, it only works if you have a big audience. Otherwise, you just true. Uh, Very true. If you have two ten followers on Twitter, you can repurpose on LinkedIn. You know, no one's gonna care. So of course, if you're Dicky Bush and you have five hundred k followers on Twitter, it's super easy to on on uh, LinkedIn. I was um, more talking about smaller creators uh, mm -hmm. with I don't know maybe uh, 50, 60 k. And uh, within months, they reach this uh, amount of followers, which is honestly huge on LinkedIn. Uh, I feel like, you know, having 10K followers on LinkedIn is means more than having 10K on Twitter. I mean, for me, like a follower doesn't have the same value different compared, like uh, depending on social media. So that's still huge. And uh, many people are struggling to, you know, to grow. And it's interesting to see these uh, creators uh, Again, playing the game on easy mode. Well, Very true. I would be curious, Jeremy, what your thoughts are in terms of monetization with the two platforms, because from my experience, at least, I found that at least the creators that I've met on Twitter are more on the digital product, small thing, kind of, yeah. you know, 150, 300 bucks versus LinkedIn, which is maybe I'm biased, obviously, because that's my platform that I did better on. Uh, where you could sell more services in terms of buying power. Do, do you have any thoughts on that? No, for sure, LinkedIn is way ahead. And that's the issue uh, that many influencers have on Twitter is that you can have literally 500K followers, but in the end, you're just a troll. You know, like no one takes you seriously. <laughs> and that's why I think like the, the reason why Elon Musk introduced the whole monetization system is that Otherwise, there's no real incentive for Twitter influencers. And when you start to have like a uh, true and serious alternative like LinkedIn, or you can do short form, uh, you know, posts, you can have this kind of like writing content, uh, social media, then things are getting scary for Twitter. And that's why they had to, you know, come up with something to have them stay and keep uh, trolling. Because uh, if you know, like what happened with uh, Vine, like uh, 15 years ago, it was oh, literally yeah. one of the first creator of social media where creators would really like produce a lot of content and they didn't care about the creators there was no incentive to stay on the platform so mm -hmm. they just uh they uh that's why the the platform uh just you know like failed because because of this so yeah for sure there's much more value being an influence on linkedin uh rather than on twitter but again it depends also on the person if you're a solopreneur uh if you don't know like for a like very tech space you know computer engineering is kind of stuff maybe twitter is better so it really depends on issues but overall yeah i would pick linkedin over twitter any day when it comes to your value value as a creator yeah yeah i, I would think so too because like it's much harder to sell on twitter they're also tech savvy it's kind of more geeky text-based people We've yeah. also explored like even Instagram and, and stuff to compare because I personally enjoy the data side of monitoring the audiences and the demographics and LinkedIn will push the buy button. Twitter will ask 15 questions before they don't push the buy button. Um, but it's amazing how I personally met those creators that you see. Um, it's more like small offers on Twitter, small offers on Instagram, but big services yeah. on LinkedIn. So it's, it's cool to see the LinkedIn nerds come to Twitter and try and it doesn't work, but vice versa, seeing all those kind of ghostwriter big boys on Twitter come to LinkedIn, like you said, get 10, 20,000 followers in like a month. And I'm like, wow, that's yeah. the true uh, skill with text, right? Yeah, yeah, but uh, I was gonna say like in the last few months, uh, there's clearly like all LinkedIn influencers, like all Twitter influencers now they have getting active on, on LinkedIn yeah. because, you know, there's all this whole issue is being too dependent on one platform. So they all try to have 
LinkedIn, Twitter, newsletter, podcast, because you can't, you know, just risk everything on the platform. And the fact that LinkedIn is turning into this more like creator social media, which it wasn't two or three years ago, it's a great thing for uh, Twitter creators because they can, you know, just repurpose and uh, and uh, find new leads, this kind of stuff. So I feel like in one or two years, everybody's going to be on both Twitter and LinkedIn. And uh, I think that's a good thing because I think like they're complementary social medias for sure. Mm -hmm. no, I know we only have one more minute of Jeremy's time here. So I do want to ask one, one more question for you. So you're obviously the, uh, you see much more data trends, et cetera, from behind the scenes than we all do. If you're someone who's just getting started, let's say on LinkedIn, because that's just what I know best. What sort of niches do you see that are up and coming right now? that a lot of people really haven't seen much content on or maybe haven't experienced from the LinkedIn side? Well, it's an easy answer. Everything that's not business created, there is literally like a highway uh, highway to fame on LinkedIn. Uh, you can just go on the app, check all these uh, niches and they're literally empty because no one produces content. So again, mm. LinkedIn in two, three years is gonna be this big social media for creators, for all kinds of creators. So there's this massive opportunity for a uh, new, new bit. You guys, and also, uh, yeah, don't do like personal branding stuff. Don't do content marketing stuff. Don't do sales stuff. It's super crowded right now. And honestly, there are other ways to get started and get uh, famous faster. That's that's your objective. It's so funny you're saying that. I literally just met. It was probably a month ago. I forget his name. I wish I could give him a shout out on here, but he's a chef, and he's creating foodie yeah. content on LinkedIn. I said, "You are one of one." There is, I don't see this anywhere on LinkedIn. So I was like, keep doing what you're doing. You got awesome content. Super interesting. That's a great example. And there are a few chefs, there are a chef LinkedIn ranking on that you can, you can check out. But yeah, that's a great example. If you're a chef, you're a restaurateur, you want to share your experience, people are going to love it. Because yeah. again, most people, they don't use Twitter. They don't use any other social media. So again, it's just super easy mode for you. Awesome. Jeremy, Jacob, thank you both so much. I appreciate you. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. You're welcome. All right. And I will stop the recording, but um, yeah, Jeremy, this has been unreal. So thank you very much for your time.